y'all doing today? We stand up on our feet, get ready to praise the Lord, call everybody in from the back. Oh, good morning, Facebook. Thank you for joining us today. quick announcement before we go into worship this could very well be our last uh, Sunday service in this sanctuary right here and uh, we're believing and praying that the fire marshal inspection which is going to be Wednesday will pass with flying colors and so next Sunday morning we will be in our new sanctuary amen <laughs> hallelujah now, with that said, uh, just to give you a little update, we are still going to have two services for the first Sunday. That's going to be 9, 30, and 11, um, just in case. Is that all right? <laughs> just in case. So I'd hate for everyone to show up at 10 and we not have room in here for everyone if, for whatever reason. But 
we will. We're believing and praying. This week's going to be a great week. I know we have chairs possibly coming in Tuesday. Uh, anyone that would like to come out, I, I can. Uh, uh, we can definitely use the help. Wednesday, what we're doing, in lieu of having our Bible study, we're still going to be here at 530. We're going to have sandwiches in the back. We're going to go through our new sanctuary and, you know, just clean up what we need to clean up. Not a whole lot, but we'll, we'll position the chairs and get ready for those things. Amen. So that's what's taking place. I just want to let you know, give you an update on that. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Just invite his presence in this place. He's already here. Amen. Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, for being here in the midst of us. We know that we're the temple of the Holy Spirit. You reside in our hearts. Lord, you called us, Lord God, to assemble ourselves together and, and Lord, corporately uh, uh, participate and corporately uh, uh, be able to dwell in your presence. So, Lord, we yield to the person, power, and presence of your Holy Spirit, and we say yes to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. for worship this morning. Lord, we just thank you, Father. We thank you for this opportunity to come before you in corporate worship this morning, oh God. Lord, have your way in each and every one of our hearts today, oh God. Lord, just draw us by your spirit, Father. Let us not leave today the same way we came, Lord God. Let us have a greater hunger and thirst for you, Father God. We just thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You're so worthy, God. Hallelujah. Let's just praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You're worthy, oh God. Worthy. Worthy is the Lamb. Thank you, Jesus.
I don't feel that you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. stood before creation eternity in your hand you spoke the earth into motion my soul now to stand and you And carry the weight of my shame. My sin weighed upon your shoulders. My soul now to stand. So what?
doesn't love us at times, but he just wants to know he's very pleased with us, and that, you know, he, we're here to bring him glory, you know, and whatever it is that gets in that way, we're just to deal with it, and realize that all we have to do is come to him, repent, and he is so willing and, and faithful to forgive, that we can get on with what the purpose is that he created us to get on with, so when the obstacles come, he wants us to quit looking at them as the, in, you know, realize that's just the enemy that's keeping you from your purpose and your place in the body because as you realize that he's our head he wants you to know that he he is the brain of us and he we are the body of christ and when we come together in unity and that means when we long, learn what it means to be in unity as a body he can use this church as a body as his body to reach the people in our community so we need to have unity and, and watch what we say and think. But he wanted us to know that, you know, he's very pleased with us and he is in the midst of your praises. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Can I say ahead, something? Sir. I just wanted to, just to, that just so confirms to me the love and the acceptance of the Father. I was listening to a message yesterday and it was on true repentance. And it talked about repentance versus remorse. When we're remorseful, then we're sorry we did things, but we don't necessarily change our way of thinking. We just change our action. 
but repentance is when we change our will. The will is changed in us that we want to please God. We don't want to please ourselves. So whatever it takes, we turn. What is it? One one eighty. You turn completely around and you go the opposite way. That's true repentance, and the will is changed. And it gave the parable of the uh, the prodigal son. And it was so beautiful because what it said was that the prodigal son came to a place to where he changed his will. He didn't want to live like he was living anymore. And it wasn't just because of uh, that things weren't going his way. He wanted to go back to the Father, and his will changed by he had determined in his heart that he was going to go to the Father, and he was going to ask his Father to forgive him and be willing to work as one of the servants, not necessarily to have the inheritance of the son any longer. And it said when that son was walking down the road, he had already determined in his heart and his will that he was just going to ask for forgiveness and ask to, you know, just be like a servant. And when the father saw him coming, that the love of the father not only he didn't wait for him to come to him, he ran and met that son where that son was at. And then he didn't even give the son a chance to say, I'm sorry and I'll live as a servant. I don't deserve to be a son any longer. He said, no, he said, go get the fatted calf. He said, get the sandals, get the robe. So the father didn't even give him a chance to say, what he had planned in his heart and his will to do. And I thought, God, the love of that father. And that's the love. That's just what Camille was saying. I mean, when we mess up, let's not just be remorseful. Let's determine in our hearts to change our will that it's more important to please the father than to please the flesh to do it again. And he just accepts us back in, not as a servant, but as a son. It just, it ministered to me, and I hope it does you as well, but just to show the love of the Father. Is there anyone that wants to run, wants to run to the Father's arms? This is the time to do it. Come on down right now. Hallelujah. Come on down and let the Lord just minister to you. Amen. Now I know I'm supposed to share this word. Yesterday when we were in prayer, the Lord kept bringing to me was allow him. Allow me. Our part is to allow him. He's willing and ready. He's able. He has it all that we need. We could ever, we can't even imagine all that he has. Our mind won't let us. And all he wants us to do is allow him. Give, give it back to him. Surrender to him. Everything we've been singing about today, every word that's come forth today, we just need to allow the Father to be who he is to us. Amen. I'll sing that one more time, that battle song. And if you want to run to the Father, come on up here because he's running to you. Amen. This is how I find my battle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is how I find my battles. This is how I find my
from here. <laughs> Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. And I want to invite Diaz class up here. They've got an announcement for us and praise and worship team. Thank you all. That was powerful and anointed. Yes. Come on, Miss Diaz. Welcome. Um, welcome. Isn't it a great day to be alive? Yes, it is. And they're not nervous. They're so excited to talk. Um, last week, we studied on missions and missionaries. And our church, we um, support them. And um, we talked about how you can have a missionary even in America. Because there are some places, I think it's Georgia in the mountains or... Arkansas maybe, where missionaries go there and they speak and help kids and you can, um, what a missionary does is they go, you know, wherever they are sent to, out of the country or in the country, and a church will support them or people will support them and give them money and uh, supplies and things that they need. Um, and it was really good and exciting and some of us have even maybe been called to the mission field. How many of you believe that a 12, 13 year old can be called to the mission field? Yes. They really can. When you hear it or you feel it, it's true. It's God speaking. Um, so we learned about Deanna Hagee um, last week and she is a missionary who works at a leprosy hospital and she is a research scientist for it in Nepal, India, and we will be having a bake sale after church, and all of the money that we make will be going donated to her. Ah. Acts 1-8, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you should be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and even to the ends of the earth. Acts 1-8. You know, one of my uh, one of my favorite stories, uh, his, historical stories, is David desired to build God uh, a house, a dwelling place. He desired it with all his heart. He was a man after God's own heart. And, you know, you can read this in Chronicles 29, I think it is. And uh, God told him no. He said, you, you're not the one to do it. He said, you know, you're a man of war, a man of blood, but your son Solomon will. And uh, it was it was birthed in David's spirit to do that in his heart, and uh, and David could have kind of got an attitude with God, he said, "But what do you mean, my son? I want to build it." And you can read in that uh, in that uh, story, you can find that David didn't have that type of attitude. He was just saying, "Praise God!" And the Bible says he gave so much more than anyone else. Encouraged the leaders to give. Encouraged the whole people to give. And they just had to turn, start turning people away that were giving. And what God showed me was David was sowing into something that in the natural he had never seen. Because for Solomon to become king and build the tabernacle, David would have had died. But you know what? He was sowing into the next generation. And I want you to know that's what we're doing. We're sowing into this next generation. That's why you see the things that we're doing. Uh, we, we have full confidence in, in God moving. Amen? We got some great leaders here, you know, at the at the church. Uh, 
uh, the, the adults as well as the young people as well as children. I want to invite uh, four of our young people up. I want to invite Abby and Emily uh, Torres to come up along with Emily uh, Stewart and Megan Doucette. If y'all will come up, we want to honor them. They are 2020 graduates, all right? <laughs> Amen. Emily, uh, Abby, and uh, Abby and Emily Stewart, and Megan was here earlier. Uh, she might be working in the back. Uh, she's working in the back. Could somebody go get her? Yeah, please. We, uh, you know what we do each year? Y'all come on over to the front. Amen. Abby Torres, Emily Torres, Emily Stewart. Emily here in the middle, she graduated from college, and the other three have graduated from high school. And what we do is we honor them in May. Uh, you know, during the graduation time, well, you know what was happening with uh, with COVID and everything. We hadn't had a chance to really honor them and pray for them and bless them so that they can continue on what God's called them to do. And so this morning, we honor these four graduates. Uh, Marlene and I have a gift form that we'll be giving you as we go out to eat this afternoon. But I want us as a church to lay hands or stretch forth your hands this way to pray for the. Here she comes. Come on in, Megan to pray for these young ladies because I'm here to tell you, uh, not only are they our future, they're our present because they are working in ministry right now. And, uh, and so they put their hands to the plow, amen? So uh, congratulations to all four of y'all, amen? Amen. And I, I just wanna, if, I, I don't wanna put you on the spot, but would y'all, any of y'all like to share of what, what Megan, what, do you, what are your plans? How about that? Pediatric nurse. Amen. How about you, Emily? I'm a dermatologist. Dermatologist. And how about you after graduating college? Um, I'm a teacher at Falls River Academy. Woo! All right, now. And Miss Abby? I want to go to esthetician school and start my own business. How about that? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. This is uh, who God's raising up. So uh, with that said, stretch forth your hands this way. Father God, we come to you once again in Jesus' name. We thank you for these young ladies that they're already a... Uh, 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 people changers, Lord God, influencers for you, Lord God, and all that they do. We lay hands on Megan and Emily and Emily and Abby, Lord God, that you, Father God, as your word says, you will bless what they put their hands to. That, Father God, you would watch over them. Uh, in Psalm chapter 5, verse 12, you tell us that you bless the righteous and surround them with favor as with a shield. I pray for favor as they go in, in to further their education, favor in uh, their jobs, Lord God, and that you would supply all of their need according to your riches and glory. Father, let them know they have a church that's supporting them, lifting up their hands, Lord God, and are here for them. Lord, most of all, we know that you're here for them and that, Lord God, you would speak to them and give them clear direction and guidance. And we thank you for doing it in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Go back to work now. In the back. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. How many of y'all have enjoyed the service so far this morning? It's been a blessing. Amen. I tell you, just the presence of God in this place. And, um, you know, as I've shared with you about uh, this upcoming week and what's taking place with our new uh, sanctuary, uh, I do want to just take care of a few housekeeping items, if that's okay. You know, um, we have in, in this uh, facility, in this area here, we this church has been here since 1978, and I tell you, we've seen great and mighty things. Marlene and I have been here for 16 years, and some of y'all have been here since day one. And uh, if these walls could talk, I know they could, you know, tell you about the miracles that have taken place, salvations, uh, um, being filled with the Holy Spirit of God, uh, miracles, provision, all those things, counseling and comfort. Uh, and so, you know, it's been a very, uh, uh, very awesome place to, for us as a church to come and, and fellowship together. And this area right here, for the meantime, is going to stay kind of similar to this. We're going to allow the children, as they have been in the past, to, to experience God with the microphones and maybe the different instruments as, they're, as, they're, um, as their parents are watching, amen, as they're supervised. But what we're doing is kind of shifting with our new sanctuary, and I'm going to need your help as far as you parents, is, you know, that what we're going to do is we're going to, 
you know, as we've, we've uh, got the new uh, sanctuary, we're not going to bring food or drink in there. Uh, we're going to kind of uh, help out with our children and make sure they're not climbing all up on the stage or in the sound booth. Very expensive stuff there. So if you can help me with that, uh, those are some of the guidelines. We, we want them to experience and be part, you know, of the church and experience and learn how to play the keyboard or learn the drums. So we're supportive of that. And we'll have a place for that, but it won't be in the new sanctuary. Amen. Y'all help me with that? Amen. We'll be doing that. Amen. Got a message for you this morning, and, and I know they have bake sale, and we normally end about noontime. If it's okay, I'll probably go to about 12.15 or 12.30 even. But I uh, just got a message for you that is really stirred in my spirit. Um, and uh, the title of the message is, uh, Come with a Purpose. Come with a purpose. And I, I take my text out of Psalm 27, and I'll start reading in verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war may rise against me, in this I will be confident. And this is my text for today, verse 4. One thing, everybody say one thing. One thing I have desired of the Lord, and actually I see three things in it. <laughs> it's all in one. That will, uh, that will I seek. Number one, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Number two, to behold the beauty of the Lord and number three, and to inquire in his temple. Father, we thank you for this morning. I thank you, Lord God, for the move of your Holy Spirit already. And Lord, just uh, I pray these words, Lord God, would, would just be spoken by your Spirit, Lord God. I humble myself and say, have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. There needs to be a purpose behind why we're coming. Reasons why we're here today. You know, you think about all across the world, uh, churches, people are assembling themselves together as believers, as Christians. The Bible calls us the church, which is a Greek word, ekklesia, which means the ones that God has called out of darkness and brought into his marvelous light. And uh, as we think about that, we've got to decide, you know, why do we do the things that we do? Have we come with a purpose this morning? Have we, do we come and assemble ourselves for, a, for God's purpose? Or do we come for tradition's sake or religious sake or just making ourselves feel better? Or do we come uh, 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 with a desire, a desire to dwell in his presence, a desire to dwell in his presence? And, and you see, there, there needs to be some reason why we do what we do. And first and foremost, I want you to know the Bible tells us that we're the temple of the Holy Spirit. So the, the God of the universe, his spirit resides in you and I if you've given your life to Christ. And so his presence is ever dwelling within you, whether you're at home, whether you're at work, or whether you're driving to and from or taking the kids to school, or whether you're corporately together like we are right now. The presence of God is, 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 is in our midst. And as I share this thought about this corporate uh, worship David said in Psalm 27 you see David had a purpose he had three reasons I see right here and he gives it in verse 4 and he reverses it at, he refers it to this as one thing as one thing and this is it that I may dwell in the Lord's presence all the days of my life that I may dwell in the Lord's presence when I'm at home with my with my family that I may dwell in the Lord's presence when I'm driving back and forth to work, that I, may, that I may dwell in the Lord's presence while I'm working, that I may dwell in the presence of the Lord when I'm sleeping, that I may dwell in the presence of the Lord, yes, when we're corporately together. You see, David goes on and he talks about not only does he have a desire to dwell, but he also uh, uh, he, he, he knows the, the, uh, there's such benefit. It says right here in verse 4, it says that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord. I say that's a benefit. I say that's a benefit that, that I tell you, Saturday, yesterday, we, 
we uh, joined our faith together with Franklin Graham, which was in Washington, D.C., in the National Day of Prayer. And though we were not able to go there in the natural, we were joined together yesterday from 9 to 10. Uh, thank you that came out, and we were in the new sanctuary. And I tell you, there was just the holy, holy presence of God in, in that place. And, and why is that? Because the ones that came brought the presence of God with them. And there was such a, 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 an anointing that was taking place. It, the anointing's not in the new facility. The anointing's in you, and the anointing's in, I, in me, and in the presence of God is there. And so there was, there was such a, a, a presence there. And, and you think about David said about dwelling, behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire of his temple, or to inquire of his presence. You see, David in chapter 27, verse 4, I see it threefold, and, and it starts out because David had confidence in the Lord in the midst of adversity. He is my light and my salvation. How can I be afraid? He said it over and over again. I shall not fear. You know why he could say that? Because he knew who his God was, and he knew his God knew him, and he knew his God invited him to dwell right slap dab in his presence, right in the middle of his presence. Church, I pray that we desire to dwell and take up residency right slap dab in his presence. As we do that individually, as we do that with our families, as I've said, and the drive back and forth to work or school or taking your kid to school or, or even, and especially here is God, Jesus has designed us, the, the church, the ecclesia, the called out ones to assemble ourselves together. The writer of Hebrews says, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves as some have. There's a reason, there's a purpose we come. Oh, I pray that we have a desire to dwell. That we have a desire to dwell in his presence. And Jesus, he's, he's given us, yes, you know, if these four walls could talk. This church was built in 1978. And I tell you, there's been awesome, mighty things taking place in, in this church. Now, back then, they did have some green and gold chairs and uh, if you would like some of those, uh, I didn't. We these chairs that you're sitting in, we recovered them, but I still have some of the old chairs back in that in that storage room. If you'd like to take that for posterity's sake, you're welcome to take it. We got new chairs coming in, but if these chairs could talk, if these walls could talk, 42 some odd years ago, the things, the move of God was taking place, the move on your heart that changed the course of people's lives. Uh, what an awesome, awesome thing. You see, because it's not about these four walls. It's not about that. It's about you and I. And as we transition into, into a new sanctuary, it's not about those four walls. As beautiful as it is, and as, as, uh, as much as you know, we sensed and felt the presence of God, and it's not about that sanctuary. It's about the presence of God that you and I uh, 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 are desiring to dwell in his presence and and ushering in the Holy Spirit, and then corporately we join together. There's a purpose for it. It's to edify one another, to educate one another, to encourage one another, to equip one another, to evangelize. I, I just appreciate uh, uh, the, the words that came forth this morning. You know, uh, nothing else uh, uh, should even matter to us except the value of a soul. And so what we're doing in, in, in transitioning into a new facility uh, it's, it's, for the, it's for the advancement of the kingdom of God. It's not that we can have prettier walls or, 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 or prettier lights, but it, it, it's to see souls saved. It's to see the church equipped and edified and encouraged to evangelize. And, and a church can be a place where people can be discipled and, and brought to a closer relationship. Oh, that, that throughout David's life, he desired to be in God's presence. One thing I desire that I may, it says right here, it says one thing, I have desired of the Lord that I will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord. He had a desire to reside. He had a desire to be right slap dab in the middle of what God was doing. Think about David, a man after God's own heart. And here he was, he, he, he oh, the scriptures that we could think of in Psalms, I'm not sure if David, uh, wrote it, but it says, oh, that the deer, the deer that panted after the water brook, so my soul panted after thee, O Lord, desiring his presence. 
David, uh, uh, as he became king, and, and I could take you back to 1 Samuel to where uh, uh, the presence of God was with God's people and, and uh, the point of contact that God had for the Old Testament saints, uh, starting with Moses, was he had them build an ark. And in that ark, it's called the Ark of the Covenant. And as he had them build that ark, he, he put in things in there, the Ten Commandments, the law. He put in Aaron's butt, a, a budded rod, and he put in a bowl of manna. And on top was a, a gold mercy seat. And this is where, if you read, this is where God would tabernacle or commune with his people. And, uh, and David, uh, what happened uh, some years, many years after Moses, you find that the people really got flippant in their relationship with God. They really got careless in their relationship with God. They really uh, could take him or leave him, and, and they, didn't, they didn't cherish and, and honor and respect and, and just really, really reverence the presence of God. How I many you know the fear of God is a good thing? We talk about the love of God. It's the fear, awe, reverence of God. Because of that, we read in 1 Samuel that the presence of God, the ark that represented the presence of God, was taken away from them. And decades later, David is king, and he's praying for the presence of God. He's praying for the, that, that point of contact. He's praying for that ark of the covenant. Oh, that it would come back in Psalm 132. Why is that? Because David wanted to be slapped dab in the center of what God was doing. What about you and I? Do we want to be right slap dab in the center? Do we have a desire to dwell? Why are we here this morning? It was a good breakfast, by the way, if you were here. Dustin did a great job in Sunday school. Man, we, we got a bake sale coming up. That sounds good. But are we here in desiring to dwell in his presence? Hallelujah. I, I pray you, as we transition from one facility to the to the other let's continue to to allow our hearts to beat with his heart our minds to be connected with his mind that we may truly be his hands and feet and yes it's it's a bigger place yes it's a it's more modern yes we got the fancy some of the fancy stuff you know lights and 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 uh, different things but got a man we got a stained glass coming soon it's gonna be pretty but let's make sure we, we make sure we don't put that before Christ. And, and, and those things are good. God wants us to have things, good things. He just don't want to, those things to have you. And how many of you know that sanctuary, if we're not careful, it can have us and grab hold to us and we get lost and it become a cathedral or a mausoleum, you know. We don't want that. Man, it's just to facilitate. It's just to go forward in what he's called us. Oh, that we may dwell a desire to dwell in his presence. Have you come with a purpose this morning? You see, your flesh might it might challenge you on that. Football season was kicked off yesterday for some, and some could really be in the mully grubs. Others could be so excited. You know we have a Mississippi State graduate in the house, and I know we got some that are excited. We got others that, man, they beat down. I don't even know if I want to go to church and face that Eddie DeWeese. He is a Mississippi State graduate. That old flesh won't keep you down. Boy, you wait till Alabama comes around. Man, we might have a lot of people out for that one. <laughs> Alabama's got revenge on their mind, and we're not looking so good in the Tigers. But anyway, so as you look at it, David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. He said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than dwell in the tents of the Alabama, no, uh, dwell in the tents of the wicked. <laughs> I got to get spiritual. I'm sorry. Hallelujah. Desire to dwell, you know, to be right slap dab in the middle. Do we have a want to? Come on, church. Do we have a, what, what's the purpose? Why are we here? Do we have a want to to, to to desire to dwell right in the center of what God's doing? I pray that we do. I pray that we come with a purpose. You know what? I know we have, and I know you have. I, I can speak that because of this worship service we just had. You see, as we come in a desire to dwell during this worship time of singing and worship and words that have come forth and people getting prayed for, that's what it's about. That's worshiping God. Whether I get to say anything or not, that's fine. 
but to worship God. And I've seen that demonstrated through, through our praise and worship team, through you being obedient to the presence and person and power of the Holy Spirit, allowing God to use you. And lives have been changed. Uh, uh, people's lives, of course, may have been just redirected in, in the things of God. Why is that? Because you've come with a purpose and you desire to dwell in His presence. Amen? And you position yourself to know Him better. And you're positioning yourself uh, to know His will so that you can be right slap dab in the center of what God wants you to be. Psalm chapter 27, verse 4, as I said, David says, uh, uh, he desired to dwell in verse 4, uh, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. He says right here in verse 4, one thing I have desired of the Lord that will I seek. My point number two, a determination to seek. A desire to dwell, but a, a determination to seek after him. To seek him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. He's not far from you. Matter of fact, in Jeremiah, I can't think of the scripture right away. I think it's in chapter 33, verse 1, 2, or 3. Call upon me, and I'll show you great and mighty things that you know not of. He, he's here, folks. Are you determined to seek him and seek after him? And getting rid of all the clutter, getting rid of all the things that are distract you. Does that mean, you, you know, the new building? Yeah, if that distracts you, you know, you just need to focus, amen? As we move in there, focus. Let's, let's you know, let's make sure we, we're, we're, we're determining uh, 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 to seek him with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. David determined to be in God's presence. Nothing was going to keep him away. I'm sure he had some fights with his flesh. He had a, he, we have a scripture, I believe it's uh, accounted to him in, in Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. David had to tell himself. There was a time in, 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 in Ziklag he, that, man, his own people were ready to stone him. And he had to encourage himself in the Lord, the Bible says. Come on, soul, line up. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. And I love his benefits. But you know what? If we're in it for the benefits, we need to get readjusted. If we're in it for the new building, we need to get readjusted. You know, we need to understand that desire to dwell in his presence, determination to seek after him, all the rest of it, what do we say in South Louisiana? It's lanyap. It's just lanyap, right? And uh, so David had this. His mind was made up. He determined uh, to go after God. You see, we'll never grow beyond what we know. Uh, we'll never do more than what we desire to do, and we'll never be more than what we determined to be. I'm sure David's determination overrode his flesh at times. There'll be times that'll happen to us. Why was David so determined? He knew God. He knew God's presence. He knew he had been in the secret place of the Most High. He had, he had entered in. And you and I have a new and better covenant. You see, the Holy Spirit would come upon David, and he would probably dance with all his might. Man, when he was bringing the Ark of the Covenant back, when he was bringing it back, he had taken off his kingly garments, as he was bringing the Ark of the Covenant back, he, he had shed all the things that showed that he was royalty, and he was with all the rest of the folks, and they were bringing that Ark back. And, man, he was just in, just in rejoicing because that point of contact, the Ark of the Covenant was back. And his wife, I think her name was Michal or Michael, she said, I can't believe you're doing that. And David said, I'll become more undignified than this. Boy, he's going to dance with all his might. Hallelujah. Do we desire to dwell in his presence? Do we, are we determined to seek after him? You see, he, David knew God's presence. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. His mercy endures forever. He had experienced and tasted. And you and I have a new and better covenant. The Holy Spirit, as I said, would come upon him. The Holy Spirit of God, the same Holy Spirit that would come upon David and make him dance with all his might. The same Holy Spirit of God that, that spoke to Moses. The same Holy Spirit of God that came on Saul and he prophesied. 
the same Holy Spirit of God that came upon Elijah and Elisha and Isaiah, the same Holy Spirit of God that in the, we read in Acts chapter 1, as one of these teenagers just said, lives in you. The Holy Spirit of God comes and lives within a believer to desire to dwell in his presence, to be determined, uh, uh, a determination to seek him. David knew his presence. He knew God's peace. He knew that it was a place of refuge. Think about it. Think about this morning and this place that we've, Marley and I have been here 16 years, and what we've experienced, the presence and peace and the place of refuge among God's people. It's been, it's been comforting. It's been inspire, inspiring. It's been challenging. It's been encouraging and and uh, edifying uh, uh, the family of God. We've experienced that, amen? Why? Because we are the church. It's not these walls. It's not that new place. We, we've experienced, yes, his presence, his power, his peace, a place of refuge. David said to behold the beauty of the law. Thank you, Jesus. And the last thing he says right here, and to inquire in his temple to inquire in his temple you see it gives us an opportunity to inquire an opportunity God has afforded us turn with me to Hebrews chapter 4 in verse 14 we'll finish up in Hebrews 4 14 thank you Jesus Warren you can come on up brother thank you Jesus just lead us here there he is Hallelujah. Donald is in the back with the teams. Him and him and uh, Alicia are putting their hands to the plow with them, uh, being our youth leaders. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14, Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Verse 16, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. I tell you, as I think about the Old Testament, Old Testament's been given to us as an example. And what Moses had, God had instructed Moses through the Holy Spirit was to build a, a tabernacle, to build an ark, and and in the tabernacle of God, and and uh, in the as they uh, as they were at the foot of Mount Sinai, and the Ten Commandments, they received them. God gave instruction on how He was going to meet His people, the tabernacle, or commune with them, and it was going to be set up in a certain way. And you would have an outer court. You would have a uh, within that tent. You would have a place called the holy place, which would house a, a candlestick. It would house showbread. It would it would house a uh, uh, the, the uh, altar of incense, the prayers, and then behind the veil, you found the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant was where the place where God was going to meet with the high priest, and on top of that Ark was the mercy seat. And on, for the Jewish calendar, they have a, they have a feast of trumpets called Rosh Hashanah. You know that was last Saturday. And what they do was the Jewish people... They would have, and, and in that day, they would blow trumpets. And at Rosh Hashanah, they would blow trumpets. And all God's people would go into 10 days of fasting and praying and repenting because Yom Kippur is coming up in 10 days. Yom Kippur is the Day of Atonement when the high priest would go from the holy place and go into where the Ark of the Covenant was. Yom Kippur is where the priest would take the uh, the, the, the sacrifice, the blood of bulls and goats, and what he would do is he would put it upon the mercy seat of God. And that was for, for, for God to, to push forward the atonement, to push forward their sin for a day that Jesus would die and hang upon that cross and die for all the sin of the world. It would push it forward. The day of atonement, it would cover their sin for another year. And the high priest would go, in Yom Kippur, they would, he would go, the Day of Atonement, year by year by year. And when Jesus 
died upon that cross. You know the story. The Bible says the veil of the temple was rent from top to bottom. Mercy came a running. Mercy came a running. Because we just read in Hebrews where the blood of Jesus, as we read right here, we have a high priest that went on before us. Oh, I tell you what, the Day of Atonement, which will be tomorrow, by the way, Yom Kippur, you know, that Day of Atonement, the Old Testament word for atonement is to cover sin. The New Testament is to abolish it. What Jesus did some 2,000 years ago is still in effect today. And in, and, and so doing what he has done is he's atoned for our sin. He cast it as far as the east is from the west. And he's afforded us grace and mercy. Thank God for Jesus. We have a high priest. Oh, that we would dwell in his presence. Lord, we desire to dwell in your presence. Lord, we desire to behold the beauty of you. And Lord, I thank you that we have opportunity to inquire, Lord God, of you. I think about David, and I think about his, uh, his desire to get the, get the, Get the uh, uh, Ark of the Covenant back. Do we have that desire to... Now, the Holy Spirit's never going to leave you nor forsake you. But you do you have the desire to, 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 to just draw closer to Him. Not to see how far you can live away from Him and still think you're okay. Just draw closer to Him. A desire to dwell, to behold Him. Stand to your feet this morning. David, he knew God was sovereign. He knew He was the one that he could go to. As we come, church, with a purpose, to worship and experience his presence, his peace, his place of refuge, we can freely receive. As Hebrews says, you see, David found this key out. He found it in that secret place of the Most High. David knew the burden bearer. You might be at a place this morning, you're carrying a burden. Peter tells us this, cast your care upon him for he cares for you. Do you know the burden bearer? Do you know the one we're speaking of? You know, maybe you hadn't thought too much about attending church, you know, get into a routine or whatever the case. I pray, let's come with a purpose. I pray when we get into the next sanctuary, yeah, it's good and it's great, but we don't lose what's taking place right here and now. To allow the presence of of God, Almighty God, the power of the Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit, just to have his way. Father God, we thank you for this morning. We thank you, Lord God, that you've afforded us the opportunity, Lord God, that we can enter into your presence, that we can come boldly to the throne room of grace, that we may obtain grace, the mercy to help and grace in time of need. Lord God, I thank you uh, for the price that you paid for us, Lord Jesus Christ. And and, Lord, I pray that we have a desire to dwell in the middle of you and that, Lord, we're determined to seek you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And that, Lord God, we would have faith to inquire of you, the one that holds all the answers. Lord, we thank you and we give you the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Give me my hand clap of praise. Amen. I'm going to dismiss the congregation, but if you're in need of prayer, we have our altar workers, they'll be glad to pray for you. Don't forget about the bake sale. It's in the back. God bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.